much to talk about this morning. And joining us now is someone who campaigned hard for many of the Republican candidates who emerged victorious last night. Governor Chris Christie of New Jersey is here with us. He's also the chairman of the National Governors Association. Great to see you. Good morning. Thanks you for having me. You had a good night. We did. Republican governors and Republican gubernatorial candidates all across the country had a really good night. So they had a good night. It was good for me. Where were you watching and what did you say when you realized that the Senate was tipping in favor of the Republicans? Well, I was in 19 states in the last five days. <laughs> so <laughs> so last night I was at home. <laughs> last night I was at home, but we had a great night. And, and, you know, when Tom Tillis won in North Carolina, Joni Ernst won in Iowa, we knew it was a good night for the Republicans in the Senate. But my focus last night was on my governor's races and and uh, you know we have Bruce Rauner win in Illinois, uh, Charlie Baker win in Massachusetts and Larry Hogan win in Maryland. Uh, that's a really good night for Republicans to win in those blue states. And as a blue state governor, governor myself and as a Republican, that was particularly gratifying. So, to what do you attribute that success, particularly in those blue states, for governors? Well, listen, I think that they've seen Republican leadership in other states. And it's been enormously effective. And, you know, we had a lot of folks last night who said a lot of Republicans, incumbents were going to lose. But Rick Scott won in Florida. Rick Snyder won in Michigan. Scott Walker won in Wisconsin. So, you know, I think they saw they like governors who get things done. And I think you saw that across the country. If you're a governor who gets things done, um, the voters rewarded you. Do you think it suggests that the country is more right leaning than some pundits would have people believe? Well, I've always thought that, but but I think more importantly, there's such anxiety in the country about what's happened in Washington and how things just haven't gotten done. And I think what they were doing with governors was rewarding the governors who they believe get their job done and don't engage in all this partisan bickering and ugliness, but they work together uh, with their legislatures, whether they're of the same party or a different party. So the fact is, that's what I think is really rewarded. People are so tired of the gridlock and the ugliness in Washington. They want to see things get done. I think they rewarded Republican governors because they've been getting things done. So it's the morning after the midterms, and you know what that means. Time to talk about 2016. Yeah, we don't, we don't get to breathe, huh? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, we don't. It's time to set our sights forward on 2016. I know you get this question all the time, but sure. really, what is your timetable for when you're going to decide? You know, sometime next year. Um, sometime next year, there's no rush in making this kind of decision. And I think there's no reason to rush a decision as important as this. You know, I've said it all along. There's three questions I, I'll ask myself. Is it right for me? Is it right for my family? Is it right for my country? And if I don't answer yes to all three, I won't run. And if I do answer yes to all three, then I will. And today, on a day when there's been such victories for Republican governors, aren't, isn't the answer to all of that yes? Not even asked the questions yet. Come on. No. <laughs> Come on, go. No, Chris, Come I have on. I have not. I'm liking the kinder, gentler. You got the pink tie. I respect that. Yeah, that, thank that you. That's, a, that's a nod <laughs> towards you. the sensitivity of your party showing. Yeah, I've yeah. been listening. We've All been right. seeing how you're building the future of the party. All right. But you're the one who is leading the Republican governors, yes. okay? You have as much credit for what happened there. And we know that, you know, success has many fathers, right? Yep. You're certainly going to be one of them. Rand Paul was out there last night. He was punching Hillary in the nose every chance he had. He's talking about you and what was perceived as bullying somebody at a press conference. It started. So you can't just step to the side. You're going to have to get into the race or the race will come to you. Says you. Says um, me. I'm the media. You. Yeah, I understand. We will force you yeah. to make a decision. Well, you know how it happens when people try to force me to do anything. Um, I'm already seated. You know, yeah, I'm just, already yeah, sitting yeah, down. Listen, it just doesn't, <laughs> you know, it just doesn't work. And, and I'll make this decision based on my own timetable and, and not on anybody else's. Because uh, it's just too important a decision. It's life changing, and you don't make that decision. But we know overnight. they're asking you to do it. How do you deal with that? You care about your party. Everybody says that that this was important to you to to show that you could give a message in as many states as possible where governors would be helped by it. It worked. Yeah. That's got to tell you something about your ability to message. You know that your party is pushing you towards getting more involved in this. How do you say no? Well, I don't know that you do say no, but I haven't said yes, and, and that's a big difference. Uh, and I'm flattered. I mean, yes, how you react to it. It's incredibly flattering, Chris, to have lots of people ask you to consider running for president of the United States. And I'm incredibly flattered. But this morning, what I feel is incredible pride in really great candidates across the country. This is not easy. 
to run statewide anywhere. And to be a Republican who runs statewide in a tough state like Illinois mm. or Massachusetts or Maryland and wins, I'm incredibly proud of those guys. They deserve Shows the credit. Shows that there's a window of opportunity for a different kind of leadership. Sure, I'm certainly baiting yep. you. There's no question about it. I know yes. you see it coming. It's okay. But, and so what's going to be the big foil? It will be, can Chris Christie control himself on the national level? Well, because, why is they'll, it? because they'll say, you can't yell at people like that. Well, first of all, why, why would you think that what I did last week wasn't controlled? Uh, first off, by what why definition think, was it control? Why, why would they think that it, I didn't do exactly what I wanted to do? I know, but the question is, can you be that way at the next level yes. and not be seen as a bully? Yes. Yes, be yourself. How about just be yourself? That's what I try to do every day. My mother said to me a long time ago, she said, you know, Chris, be yourself. Then tomorrow you don't have to worry about trying to remember who you pretended to be yesterday. And, you know, I'm going to be myself. And if I decide to run for something else, if that's not good enough, then it's not good enough. But I'm not going to change who I am, and, not for anybody. And that is certainly what New Jersey voters have embraced about you. They love the Jersey style, the no-nonsense style. Perhaps we should remind people of what that testy exchange was last week, just to remind people for one second. Could, could they possibly have forgotten <laughs> well, after how many times it's been played? But sure, one more time, why not? Just for good Wasn't measure. My idea. I let's was there. Watch. I remember. <laughs> Cue the tape. So listen, you want to have the conversation later? I'm happy to have it, buddy. But until that time, sit down and shut up. Yeah. You right. wouldn't do it differently if you had a chance? No. Why? Listen, Who you are what you don't you see are listen, things. But Chris, listen, what you don't see in that tape is that for about 60, 70 seconds mm -hmm. before that, he was standing up, he was talking over me. I was trying to work my way through it and give him his time to say what he wanted to say. But we had 200 other people there who were there to listen to what we had to say about Sandy relief and Sandy recovery. It wasn't fair to those people. And after giving him a period of time to express his point of view, which I did, then it was time for him to stop. And if you're a leader, then you tell the guy, stop it. And that's what I did, and I wouldn't do it any differently. That's who I am, and you know, the fact is, he was there to make a statement. He made his statement. He had time to make his statement. He had plenty of media afterwards. Great. I don't begrudge him that. He's got his right to say what he wants to say, but not to interrupt an event that 200 other people were sitting there looking to hear. And if you listen to the crowd afterwards, they wanted him to sit down also. And, and that is the point, that in New Jersey, your authenticity and your blunt style works really well. But do you think that it plays across the country? Do you think it's... It, that uh, voters in Iowa would feel the same way about it. Listen, I, what I found being in 37 states in the last 11 months is this country is much more alike than it is different. And, you know, people always say, well, will you play here or play in the South or, you know, any place other than New Jersey or New York, they think, well, you won't possibly play. It's wrong. It's just wrong. You know, I got great reaction from people all over this country in the last 11 months. And what they say to me most of the time is, we like the way you act like yourself. Be direct. Give them hell. Those are the things people say to me. And it doesn't matter whether I'm in Iowa or Alabama or Illinois or Arizona. It's the same thing. So I think this country is a lot more the same than it is different. Sweet strength. Sweet strength is what works best across the country. It's the harshness that sometimes can turn people off. Let me ask you something. If, when you're deliberating, it's people keep saying, well, it's going to be Rand Paul. Rand Paul is going to run also. You worried about Rand Paul? I don't make that decision based on anybody else. Because if you try to figure out the politics of this stuff, Chris, you're just, you know, throwing darts with a blindfold on, okay? It, that's not the way it works. You need to decide. Do you want it? Are you ready? Is it good for you? Is it good for your family? Can you help the country? And then the politics takes care of itself or it doesn't. Listen, lots of people are running. Only one person is going to win. And so that means everyone else who decided is going to lose. So you can't make the judgment based on that. And there's not any one particular person that I sit around and think about other than myself and whether I'm ready and I want to do this, and whether it's good for my family or not. That's the way you make the decision. Governor, let me ask you something, since I have an opportunity, since you're sitting here. One of the things I think there will be conversations about look ahead to 2016. I'll let you do the pushing on whether you're going to run or not. But in terms of the perception of the Republican Party and the perception that uh, certain people aren't necessarily spoken to within that party. How do you counteract that now going these two years ahead? Well, listen, I, I don't need to wait. I did it in New Jersey. So how do we do it on a national well, level? Well, listen, then? you do what I did in New Jersey. I mean, listen, we got 51% of the Hispanic vote last year. I mean, let's remember a year ago yesterday, 
I won 61% of the vote in New Jersey, 51% of the Hispanic vote, 23% of the African American vote. Um, you know, how did we do it? We worked for four years to include people, to give them a seat at the table, to do more listening than talking, and to make sure that you treated everyone with the type of respect that they need to be treated with. Um, and listen, I don't always agree with any one of those groups on every issue, and they don't expect me to. I tell folks in my state all the time, if you're looking for the candidate you agree with 100% of the time, go home and look in the mirror. You're it. <laughs> you're the only person you agree with 100% of the time. So I don't think people are looking at you to pander on a particular issue. They're looking at you to be yourself and treat them with the kind of respect that would make them want to sit at the table with you. I think that's the way you do it. Governor Chris Christie, great to have you here. Congratulations on the successes last night. Thanks. It was a great night for our guys and women, and I'm really happy for them. Thanks so much. Appreciate you coming on the show, Governor. Thank you, Chris. Good luck to you going forward. You got